Hi everyone, today we're going to be going and taking a look at my analysis as now the primary season is winding down. It doesn't get the same amount of news coverage now as it did once get uh, due to COVID-19. But I will be breaking down what I think are the six biggest reasons for where it all went wrong for Senator Bernie Sanders. So again, six reasons of I think where uh, where the campaign could have improved their messaging, where the campaign could have done things differently, and how the campaign actually works. So again, not making excuses here, but this is just six ways I would improve the campaign and where it might be on an upward trajectory or at least doing better than it is right now if I was associated with the Sanders campaign. So <coughs> six reasons and six six reasons where it all went wrong for Senator Bernie Sanders and also six ways from those six ways where I think they could have improved the campaign's messaging. But, you know, hind, hindsight is, tw is always in 2020, so, you know, it's not necessarily just, you know, if they did this, that and the other, they could win, not necessarily. All I'm saying is this is six ways that I think they could have improved the campaign. So, first way I think... He should have had a unifying message after he won big in the state of Nevada. So if you remember, in Nevada, there were still a bunch of moderates. Sanders won with like almost 50% of the vote plus one. So almost a majority in Nevada. What he should have done then, he should have said, hey, all, all of you other people, I'm the leader you need to come to me, you know, let's beat Trump together with me as me as the leader and we're trying to bring you into this revolution and help help you, you know, have a better life in his opinion. However, there was no real unifying message. There was a lot of talk of taking on the establishment, which I'll get into in a later point. There was a lot of kind of you know, not not many attacks on Biden, which I think were was good. But um, un unifying message after Nevada, I think that this, I think he should have definitely had more of an inclusive message instead of going after the political establishment. I, I'm fine with him going after the political establishment when you're the underdog. You need to get a bit of momentum going. You need to get the ball rolling. But if you're the leader, you want to bring everyone in. You don't want to say... You, 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 you're, you're the establishment, you can't be in our movement because then he's not actually going to gain power. You can talk about that when you're trying to get into the top tier and be the leader, but once you're there, you shouldn't talk about that because then you're kind of excluding many people. So I think the campaign should have had a more unifying message after Nevada. And so that was one of the ways I thought they could improve the campaign instead of you know going after the establishment just in general uh if they kind of linked it to the establishment is joe biden and then tried to make an electability case i think that could have been what what could have worked but just kind of going in general after the establishment i don't think really was a good idea because a lot of voters they're like you know i'm mainstream democrats i support joe or mayor pete or whoever or Amy Klobuchar or whatever and oh Bernie says I'm the establishment I don't really want to be called the establishment so there wasn't any unifying message of saying everyone come with us into this revolution let's beat Trump together and uh you know we have our differences but I think it's important to beat Trump altogether and he could have made the case as to why he is at the top of the ticket and made the case for his own electability. Instead, he just kind of excluded people. So secondly, go tit for tat with the endorsements. So I have four names here, but uh, it's it's not really about the names in that sense. It's about on uh, on the night before Super Tuesday, there was a massive Biden rally. Uh, where he received endorsements from, uh, f sorry, from, who was it from? Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, and also Beto O'Rourke. Uh, Amy Klobuchar locked up Minnesota for Joe Biden. Beto O'Rourke locked up Texas for Joe Biden. And both candidates signified that it's a united moderate wing in the party going into Super Tuesday. So 
if they're doing endorsements, then you also have to go tit for tat with your endorsements as well. So I would have got as many former candidates and as many big name politicians out there. And so if they had that unifying message, they would they could say, look, we also have these candidates as well. I would have tried to court Andrew Yang's endorsement because he had already dropped out of the race. I would try and get Gabbard to drop out of the race and endorse Bernie. I would have tried to get Elizabeth Warren to definitely drop out and endorse Bernie. That probably would have got uh, Texas back and Minnesota back, both places Bernie only narrowly lost with the Warren endorsement. He, and he only narrowly lost despite all of those other politicians coming out for Biden. So if Sanders was able to counter that, then it would basically be neutral. And then he still would have picked up Massachusetts, Minnesota, Texas, all of these states, if Warren, I think, had dropped out. And Gabbard and Yang also had, you could say, you know, we're, we're all coming together with Senator Bernie Sanders. And I also, this is not on Super Tuesday, but on South Carolina. I would have, if you at least tried to court Jim Clyburn and at least say, you know, we would like your endorsement, the, the Sanders campaign apparently didn't even try. That's a big mistake. You should always try and get as many endorsements as possible. Um, but even if Sanders, he doesn't even need to get Clyburn's endorsement. In fact, I don't know if that would even necessarily, he, it might help him with some older African Americans. So it would have helped if he actually got Clyburn's endorsement. But if only he had just held off Clyburn from endorsing Biden, and he would have done that by Bernie courting Clyburn's endorsement, then I think this the dynamics of the race would have drastically shifted because Biden... May, he still probably would have won South Carolina, but not by the massive margin that he actually did, which w would have resulted in a splintered moderate field and the other moderates not getting out of the race and endorsing Biden before Super Tuesday, which means Sanders rounds away with Super Tuesday and he has the momentum and he's the nominee. And then even if, let's say in another scenario, Clyburn is held off, but the other moderates still go with Biden and that's less ideal for Sanders, but still... Biden still doesn't have all the momentum going for him. And Sanders can still say, you know, I won three of the first four states. And and then he can still go into Super Tuesday as the leader, right? So those, those and also it's not just those people. You could have got many, many other people. You could have got, you know, people associated with the Warren campaign. You should have got, uh, you could have got Ayanna Presley to endorse. You know, she's a former Warren Backer you, you, and tried to have a united, progressive and moderate ticket moving through into the general election. Third thing, uh, I don't think it was smart for the campaign to have a taking on the establishment after Nevada. So I already kind of covered this. Sorry about that. I already covered this in uh, the first point that I made, but I just think it's really important that I think it was a mistake for Bernie to go after the establishment after the state of Nevada. You need to have a unifying message. Fourth point, African-American voters and South Carolina voters. So the Sanders campaign, they did a lot of work with African-American voters. They, they really just went into their communities and they tried to get their votes and they barely moved the needle. They had a few points extra with African Americans as compared to 2016. And I, I get it, you know, you're running against a former vice president, but it's important that you have African American support in a democratic primary, because if you don't, you're going to lose. And the Sanders campaign found that out the hard way. So African Americans and South Carolina... I think that the Sanders campaign, they should have held off Jim Clyburn and go tit for tat for the endorsements and do all, all the previous things, and they should have gone all in on South Carolina. They should have gone all in on South Carolina. Because if you had gone all in on South Carolina, you would put all of your chips in one bucket. There is a risk. And maybe the front runner doesn't want to take any risk because they don't want to change up the dynamics of the race. But if you had gone all in on South Carolina, I still think he could have. He, then he would have narrowed the gap with Biden at least to a point where he would still have some momentum going into Super Tuesday. 
since he was, you know, all over the place in Minnesota and Massachusetts and blah, 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 he, and he didn't go all in, I think that was a mistake by the Sanders campaign. And also, just, just a point on African-American outreach. I, I think that, obviously, they were in an uphill battle, obviously, against Joe Biden, but uh, with African-Americans, but I think at least trying to get African-American endorsements like Clyburn instead of just saying, instead of not even asking, I think could be a mistake. So, number five, fifth point, I think that the campaign underestimated Joe Biden after Nevada, and I think that was a big mistake. I think the campaign thought that after Nevada, you know, there's, there's going to be a massive kind of... Uh, I guess, coalescing uh, around Sanders after Nevada. And there was, in a way, but it wasn't enough to go after Biden in South Carolina. And the campaign underestimated Biden in South Carolina in that in the, they, they thought that after Nevada, he, he's been sapped of all momentum. Uh, he has got nothing going into South Carolina. That the South Carolina firewall would break but it didn't. The firewall didn't break. What they had planned is that the firewall breaks and then all of that African-American outreach will come actually to the table and vote for Bernie. Maybe Bernie pulls it out of the bag in South Carolina. And if you win the first four out of four states, then you're, then you're, you know, everyone else is done for the nomination and you are going to be the nominee. So, so that's kind of where I stand. I think the campaign underestimated Biden after Nevada. That was a big mistake. Joe Biden won South Carolina big uh, against Senator Sanders. But, uh, but yeah. Okay, s- last point, sixth point, sixth point. There was no new strategy after Super Tuesday. So the Bernie strategy, this is the last point, by the way. The Bernie strategy is to energize young voters, energize Latino voters, and get them out to vote. Now, those voting groups together were enough, even with the subdued young voter turnout, they were enough to get him to 30%. They were enough to get him to that, in which 30% is enough to win a primary if there's seven people in the race. However, that strategy only worked to get you to 30 If it's just Biden and Sanders left, you have to get to 50, you have to get to 52, you have to get to 55, you have to get to 60, since it's a proportional primary, in order to start netting delegates and in order to start uh, making up ground. And there was no new strategy. It was the same, same, you know, just trying to reach out to young voters and Latino voters. And it just wasn't enough in order to get Sanders across the finish line. And San- that strategy was great for 30% plus one, but he needs to get to 50% plus one. And getting to 50% plus one needs a new strategy. And it's also obviously harder than getting to 30% plus one. So yeah, Joe Biden versus Bernie Sanders, there was no other candidates left and the campaign did not have a strategy change in order to adjust to that new reality so that's it for today's and it's just quickly it's worth noting the campaign actually said they wanted a one-on-one matchup i think they would have done better in a crowded field because given the strength of sanders base and how committed they are to sanders i think that the other can no other candidate has that level of commitment so i think it would have been better for sanders to be in a crowded race but they said they wanted a one-on-one but maybe that's just campaign talk but that's it for today's video guys thank you so much for watching i'm gonna i've got a lot of videos on my mind i think i'm gonna do a biden versus trump forecast maybe later on go through each individual swing state and say you know analysis as of right now for biden versus trump uh, i'm also going to go through again looking at winding down the primary coverage i'm going to be taking a look at the six most influential moments in the 2020 race in a countdown format so i'll do six most influential and fifth most then fourth and third and then second in one a, a separate video and then first in a separate video so six and five four and three two and then one so that's it for today's video guys thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you all in the next one good night